over from San Jose in that tonight. He's solid, Mike. And there's got to be a weight limit for these guys. For Phoenix Taylor, as far as goaltenders, 6'1", 220. I mean, you got to be a giant to be a Phoenix Taylor goaltender. At the other end, Semyon Barlamov coming off that tough game against the Edmonton Oilers. Back in the in the nets for the Avalanche tonight. And, Mike, this is... This is going to be a really interesting game to see who steps up to the Avalanche because it has been laid out there that Patrick Waugh has said this is an important game, this is a big game, and you want your best players to be good. HD coverage tonight presented by Nova Home Loans, bringing it home to you in high definition. And we begin our flight. The Coyotes without Shane Doan, their captain leading goal scorer, out to, because of illness, Derek Morris, family situation. Not available for tonight's game. And Mike Smith, their top goaltender, is the backup tonight for Phoenix. So things working in the favor of the Avalanche, perhaps, as we begin our action here at Pepsi Center in Denver. Benoit with a puck at the near side point. Gets checked by Botker, takes away the puck, and puts the puck across the ice, sent through the middle zone, and then dumped in from center by Kyle Tachura. The puck comes around the boards in the Avalanche zone. But the Avs certainly not completely healthy in this game. Ada remains out. Wilson out. Hopefully back soon. And Tange may be longer than we thought. Back can't try in front. Big drive save! Oh, man. Yandel wound up for the big shot. And cleared out towards center ice. And that one was stopped. Ravonna's pass comes across. It is dumped in. And the Phoenix Coyotes were offside. That's the reason for the whistle. One of the things, Mike, we'll be talking about all night tonight is how the Phoenix Coyotes defensemen jump up into the play. You see where Yandel is, Mike? You do, you can't start from the blue line and be where he was and the puck comes from behind the net. You're reading the play, jumping up into the play, getting involved as you see that puck go in behind the net. Get it. Sends the puck across for Eric Johnson. Return back. The other defenseman out on the ice. Get it. Sends it in off the Talbot. And it's back behind the net in the Phoenix zone. Islands had the only shot the early going in this game. We played a minute and a half. Coyote trying to move out of their own zone. Pushed ahead out to its center ice by Clint Cameron. Driven right back in by the Avalanche. Pass comes across and Michael Stone. The long pass that one deflected off of Mike Ribeiro, his teammate. In the Avalanche zone pushed out to center ice by Eric Johnson. The Talbot dumps the puck ahead, way back out to center ice. Now to off the boards and Johnson coming back. Here with Ozone takes the puck. Mike, it didn't result in much of a chance for the Avalanche. If you love what you saw by Eric Johnson on that play. He took the puck, put it up the boards, and just quiet into the Phoenix zone. Pass through the center ice, comes into the Colorado zone. Punched up the ice by Holden. Stasty. It's to Mitchell. Mitchell coming into the front of the net. He shoots and missed the net. Line to begin. Mitchell and Talbot. It's been really good. Shot by the Coyotes, caught by Barlamo. That was Jeff Halpern with a chance for Phoenix. Well, for the Colorado Avalanche on the road trip, one of their best players, no question, was John Mitchell. John Mitchell had a couple of assists in Calgary in a game where the Avalanche, although they were playing very well, were down one nothing late. Talbot and Mitchell got together on a couple of goals. The goal was won by Talbot, the other by P.A. Parento, and they were able to reverse it. Down one nothing, up 2-1 in the game. They eventually won 3-2. Shot from the point. That is gloved by Barlamov. And he'll hold the puck for a face-off in the end zone. And for the Avalanche, as we talked about, they came back from that road trip disappointed in the idea that they were one win, two losses on the road trip. But, you know, maybe we'll get into a little later. There were moments inside of the both games they lost where they felt they really could have taken advantage of a goal to get back in the game. Puck worked around the boards. Cody McLeod. Punch it out towards center ice. Prevented from doing that. Hansel shoots into the corner. Starts for Colorado. Being chased by Hansel. Trying to get away. Hansel all over him. Hansel takes away the puck. Hansel trying to cut in front. Sarge slowed that up. And the puck kicks along the end boards. Hansel out of the corner of the avalanche zone with possession. Sarge trying to stay with him. 
and the long reach is the Bucky Verbata. Nice pass in front, bounce back towards Verbata. He gets pushed off the puck. A quick pass to center right for McLeod. Stone able to hold him up, and the puck's left back into the Colorado zone. Gannon will retrieve for the avalanche. Makes the outlet pass for McKinnon. Skates through center. Skates in, he shoots, and that is fumbled up for a moment there by the goaltender Grice, but he's able to cover. Let's go right side, check in with Julie Brown. Hey guys, just following up on what Peter said about the abs injuries, Patrick Dubois told us this morning that Ryan Wilson will probably play against Minnesota on Saturday. Jan Skate has skated this morning. He may be able to play against the Wild. Now that's the good news. The bad news is Alex Tangay had a setback in his timetable for his return. He says he's out indefinitely again. He was scheduled to be skating this week, but now it looks like his hip is giving him problems rather than his knee. Guys. Well, thanks very much, Julie. The update on what's happened with the Avalanche. Centering pass, shot, big save by Grice. And the rebound scooped up by the Coyotes. Backhanded ahead, sent in by Chichura. Goes to the corner. Landeskog for the Avalanche. A little flick pass across his own zone for Holden. With that injury to John Hayda. Holden has stepped in and he is taking this chance and he has played very well. On the road trip, he was even inside of the three games he played. About 17 minutes a night. But Mike, on top of it, he had a goal and an assist in the three games. He's about an inch away from scoring oh, another yeah. one. Flanked off three posts. Off the board to the near side in the high slot. Shot. Lifted up high. Centering pass. That one is chopped high and wide of the net by Clint Cameron. Slapped out in front. Marlamov was in the perfect spot to make the save. Puck comes out of the zone to lay offside on the Coyotes. As the Avalanche regroup, begin their breakout. The pass comes to Parento. To the red line and shot here. Duchesne after the puck. Murphy holds him off. Puck worked along the end boards by Halpern of Phoenix. He gets tied up by Halpern. Seen a line out of Parento, Duchesne, and Halpern. Currently out for the Avalanche. Left through center ice. Flipped in. Daphne just replacing Duchesne on the ice. As Corey Sarge has defenseman moves the puck up the boards. Out towards center for Stassi. Held up by Bissonette. The puck going across. His own zone by Connor Murphy. Gets it back. Pass the middle circle, and that is tipped on into the Colorado zone. Sarge wheels across Benoit. A couple of Coyotes right after him. A quick pass up the middle, stolen by Verbata. Cuts left, backhand, and that one went wide. Back up the boards. And the pass slipped away from Verbata. Pitching in from the far point. David Schlemko. That's been for the Coyotes. Another example of that Coyote defense jumping up in the play. Hansel eludes the Sarge. Shot on goal. Hit off a skate back to the point. Slapped by Stone deliberately wide. Wrapped around, but the net had been moved. And the whistle blown. The faceoff looks like it's going to come outside the zone. Stone scored our first period from Denver. No score here yet, Michael, in tonight's hockey game. We're expecting some goals, certainly, between these two clubs. But it's sort of the one-third mark of the season. 28 games have been played. Look at the avalanche, the, the symmetry of that. Ten road wins, ten home wins. Michael, the key for the Colorado and Anaheim, the only clubs in the league to have ten wins at home and on the road. Goals for and against. You know, the only difference, probably score a few more goals at home than on the road. But they've been good defensively, both home and on the road. Like this pretty impressive mark for the Avalanche. It really is. Even on home ice, on the road. And the Avalanche on the road for their next game after this uh, quick one game homestand against Phoenix here tonight. Avalanche will head to Winnipeg tomorrow for a game against the Jets. That'll happen on Thursday night from Manitoba. Well, for Patrick Waugh, again, we look at this, Mike, we talk about the 28 games that he has coached and the learning process, learning about your club, learning about big moments, big games, about playing on the road. For Dave Tippett, of course, it has been a much different situation. You look at his numbers, Mike, he, he has seen it all as a coach for these first Dallas Stars and now Phoenix. Kinnon off the face-off with a shot. It's stopped by Grice. 
Shot across that one that skipped by Ryan O'Reilly. And Vermet works his way to center ice. One hands the puck into the end zone. Johnson spins away. Makes the pass through O'Reilly. Keeps it around. Stopped behind the net by Grice. Drove the puck into the corner. Bounced for McKinnon. Centering pass. Big time save again by Grice. Robbing Gabe Landeskog. Like what a what a pass. What a pass. From McKinnon. McKinnon wrapped around try. Stopped by Grice. Rebound Bachner on it. Moves the puck behind the net. Bounced out to center. Handled by defenseman Nick Holden. Good pass from Stasty. He gains the blue line. He shoots. And Grice has steered that puck wide of the net. They back to the point. It got by Barry. And the puck traveled all the way back into the end zone. Barlamo sent it around the end board. Slapped up to the near side wing. Handle kept it in for the Coyotes. Pass broken up. Avalanche moves the puck to center. Mitchell with Stasty. Sends it across. Handed behind the net for McGinn. Off the board, steal made by Verbata. Skate into the corner of the zone, winds and shoots. And it deflects off the stick of Andre Benoit, and the puck has gone out of play. Well, this is a very good club, Phoenix, on the faceoff. So for Nate McGinnon, this is going to be a real challenge. Does a nice job right there, gets the puck back. But here's the pass, Michael. The right side of your screen, here comes Landeskog. He loses his man in front, and what a save by Grice, but what a pass. Michael, look at that aerial. He threw it over the leg and over the stick of the goaltender. Ah. You're impressed. <laughs> a, little, a little more than impressed. <laughs> Parento shot, and that is juggled but caught by Grice. Talking with the Vancouver coaches briefly after the last game, they were talking about just what a quick club the Avalanche are. They were saying that the quickest club they faced this year probably has been the Colorado Avalanche. And that, Mike, when it's a strength, that's what you want to bring. Leafs to take the face off. Leafs, Talbot, and Parrott. It's been a real mishmash already. Different line combinations out there for the Avalanche. Coming in, the slot shot saved by Barlamov. Rebound came free. Dragged along the boards, back behind the net. Looked loose, Flint Cameron. Turned it back behind the net, race into the corner for the puck. Coyotes get there first, David Moss. Turned it back behind the abs net. 11-15 remaining. In the first period, no score in our game. Parento bumps with Rivero as he comes to the neutral zone and puts the puck in. Pass up the ice. Rivero skates to center into the ab zone. His pass deflects. Portolo for Colorado. Finds McLeod. Gets his way to the red line. Shoots the puck in. McLeod after it. Gets checked, shoved. And the puck is pushed up the boards and into the neutral zone. Knocked back to the avalanche zone. It'll buy Stone. Was back and uh, back into the cross zone zone, then a rink wide pass for Hansel to the red line. Sit in the Colorado zone. Once back out in the center by getting into the avalanche. Robata takes it for Phoenix. He gets to Murphy. Pass through the middle, headed oh. for Hansel, bounced off the Nick Holden. The avalanche maneuvered the puck into the Phoenix zone. McKinnon. Centering pass, shot by O'Reilly. Lances off the skate, goes wide. Pass down the boards for Landeskog. Makes the handoff McKinnon. Back towards the point, and it bounced to center ice. It's fielded by Gennon. The cross for Johnson. Eric Johnson. Shoots the puck down the ice. No icing, it's been waved. Steal by O'Reilly. Out of the corner. Looking to make a play. Puck comes up the boards. Just off the bench, start shot save made by Grice. The rebound was there, but the Coyotes got to it first. Pass up ice. And that one deflected away from the chip sure, the Avalanche has possession. We've seen cut the Phoenix Coyotes by spring that forward through the middle a couple times in this game. So the Avalanche have to be very aware of that quick pass. Coyotes with a puck. 
pass by Burbank, intercepted. Three on two for Colorado. Pass for McGinn. He shoots, kick save, rebound. Off his dance, and it goes wide. Backhand around the boards. I'll tell you what, there's been some rebounds. On shots by the Avalanche here in this first period. Hands out shooting the guy who's nine to five. And there have been some pretty good opportunities following those shots. Well, the Avalanche have had a real solid first 11 and a half minutes of this first period offensively. They're, they're creating some chances. Glad for Colorado shoots the puck in to the Coyote zone. Strikes, looks to handle it, sends it around the glass. Leach was waiting at the half board. Into the corner for Bordalo. And a takeaway. Ribeiro with Clint Cameron into the Colorado zone. Ribeiro slows up, runs into his teammate, Moss. And the puck comes straight, shot rising, and goes high. Shot to the point. Clint Cameron slides it over to Stone. Shoots it deliberately wide of the net. Comes up the board to Portolo. And the bounce of the puck to center ice. Pass across for Stone. Shot in. This will be icing and left. The Coyotes get there first. They do. So the icing waved off. Backhanded behind the net. Bounces free to the corner. The Avalanche have got the puck. Quick pass out to center ice by Duchesne. Pushed ahead by Talbot. Fits the net for the Coyotes. Hands it off to Halpert. Out to center ice. Collision. The Avalanche end up with a puck with 7.20 to go in the first period. Halpert's pass over the line. Down the far side board. Good hit by Johnson. The Coyotes still in possession. First move back behind the net by Tim Kennedy. Makes the pass to Burbata. Pass in front. He had a man there. Yandel could not hold the puck because he lost his stick. It broke. Has him a chance here. Pass shot. Big time set again by Grice. That time he arrived, he arrived across the crease and robbed Talbot. That ended up the board. The puck got away. And he asked. Now go back to defense as the Coyotes come into the zone. Onside, Verbata couldn't control the puck, but it's followed by Hansel. He shoots, saved by Barlamov, and the puck turns to the far side wall. Pushed up ice by Talbot for McKinnon. Chased by Hansel. And a hit right in front of the Coyotes bench by Verbata. Frees up the puck. Avalanche have got it between the circles in her own zone. Passed out the center. Scored that by O'Reilly. Stone for the Coyotes. The puck to center. Landis got sent it right back into the Coyote zone. And for the Avalanche, Mike, you just got to keep going the same way. Grice has made three incredible saves in this first period. Keeping it a scoreless game. Big time collision. Holden and Bodker. Landis got hit by Bodker. Landis got sent the puck to center ice. Barry backing up, then makes the forward pass. Flipped it in by McKinnon. Murphy shoots the puck across. Pass through the middle, knocked down. Bouncing puck in the circle. Chopped in, still bouncing. Fielded by Mitchell. He turns and shoots high. Off the glass and around to the near side. Moss pass to center ice. Flint Cameron down the board. Far side, and Yandel's shot goes wide. Avalanche have got it. Nasty. Transitions to offense. Broken up at center ice. Nancy back with the puck for Colorado at, red, at the red line. Dumps the puck in. Five minutes left to play in the first period. Handles pass to center ice for Paul Bissonnette. Right, this is going to be a real big key in this hockey game. Who handles the transition game of the other team? Because both clubs are jumped up in a play that's been just a wonderful pace in this first period. Right in center by the end. Slumpko ends it up the boards. Swartz in the center. Halpert knocks the puck into the end zone after the race. The shoulder into Benoit. And Fleece arrives. Corner centering pass. Tipped off the stick to the point. Shot wide. Bounce off the side of the avalanche net. Sarch has the puck for Colorado. Drops it in the corner. 
Random Brabant. Pass back into the Phoenix zone for Yan. Cross side. Hanson. Shoots it into the Colorado zone. Tipped out to center ice. And the handle, then Murphy takes it for Phoenix. Hands it back to Murphy. His shot, and that one pinballed on the Parlamo. And then cleared out by the Avalanche, which will result in an icing call. There's your whistle. Icing indeed, the call on the Avalanche. Well, let's look some of the chances with, at some of the chances we call out of Avalanche. Mitchell, real good break off the wall right there. McKinnon in front, nice pass from O'Reilly. Then a Lannisgaard just flat rock. Marento breaking in, good shot on net. Again, another great right pad save off of Talbot. Those are the kind of plays the Avalanche have been producing in this first period. Got the chances to looking for a goal. Three and a half to go. Got over eight, and that was over eight minutes without a whistle here in this first period. Landis Scott powering his way to the front. Backhand try. That's denied. Chop deck. Bouncing puck. And slapped it towards the front of the net. Angles wide. Coyotes have the puck. Vermette. Quick pass to center ice. Scoop duck brought in. Ribeiro. Oh, excuse me, not Ribeiro, but Beckman Larson, the defenseman, had jumped up on the play. Murphy just shoots the puck from center ice. Another example of the aggressive play. That was Beckman Larson, the defenseman, leading the attack into the zone. Abs called for icing again. But for the Remember Phoenix Coyotes, Ekman Larson, all you know, the, they know how big this game is. Interesting, both clubs came off exactly the same road trip. Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver. Vancouver, who played you know, against Phoenix before Avalanche were there. Phoenix has been off since that time. Out of the corner, Eric Johnson for the Avalanche. Snap pass to center for John Mitchell. Come down the middle. Rolls the puck. He gets hit along the boards. Again, it's pinching in. For Colorado, whips the puck around. Does come out in the center ice. Up the middle, Stasty. He shoots, club save by Grice. And he'll hold it for a faceoff. And will step aside for a moment. In Denver, Colorado, still looking for that first goal of the period. Well, he's been on the right side for a couple of games. Now he's back at center ice, and certainly as his career goes along, Nathan McKinnon will be a center iceman. But you're looking at, one, the great chance he had earlier, but then the way that he sets up his line mates. Once it was Landis Cog with a nice pass in front, and then it was O'Reilly with a good shot, a good pass in the slot area. But, you know, somebody asked me before about, you know, what makes him so good? And I think that we're all so impressed with his speed, Mike. We're I mean, I think people are forgetting he's just a good hockey player. I mean, he embodies it all, and then he, you top it all off with the speed that he has. Pretty good combination. And I think it's just how young he is. Just, it's his 29th game of his NHL career. Yeah, it, the speed is almost, you know, jaw drop. And so you, you can sometimes lose the idea that he works well in the corner, he plays a physical game, and he makes the, he sees the ice well. Pass to center for it for a body, goes back to Hansel. Barry broke it up, but it took a bounce for the Coyotes. Robata takes the puck. He shoots, and that one is banked off of Barlamo. Pollock puts the puck behind the net for Robata. Steered back to the point. Robata played it with a high stick. And as soon as Hansel touches the puck, whistle's been blown with 90 seconds to go in the period. Let's play Did You Know, brought to you by Stevenson Automotive. Which cup winning coach did Dave Tippett play with when they were teammates for the Hartford Whalers? C1 uh, answer would be Randy Carlisle, C2 would be Dan Bilesma, and C3 would be Joe Quenville. There's Randy Carlisle with the Anaheim Ducks when they won the cup, Bilesma with Pittsburgh, and Coach Q, the Chicago Blackhawks. White. Shot and the save by Barlamo. Oh, Sammy Varlamov, we have seen this season and throughout his time with the Colorado Avalanche that, you know, early you can usually tell whether he is seeing that puck and when I, and where does it hit him. 
When he is really on his game early, Mike, he seems to be right in his stomach. Every single shot, square, he's seeing it, he's getting himself in perfect position. Coyotes move the puck around the board, stop behind the net, Barlamo. Push the puck to the corner. And Johnson spins back behind the net, out the pass for O'Reilly. Sends the puck in. Riley dashing that with the puck. Lost his stick. The puck kicked along the board by Landeskog. Vermette peels away with it. We have 45 seconds to go in the period. Johnson moves the puck around for O'Reilly. That's the center. Landeskog hands it off to Johnson. McKinnon puts the brakes on. Wants to make a play. Nowhere to pass to, so he sends it around the board. Deal by the Coyotes. Flint camera. Center ice, Stone. Winds it around the board. Half back by Rivera. Shot to traffic, and that was tipped. And went wide. Dropped in the corner. Flint camera centering pass to the point. Shot by Stone. Blocked. McKinnon got in the way of the puck. One last shot in the period. Misses the net. Well, we had 20 minutes of hockey. We had 20 shots on goal between the two teams, but both goaltenders did their job, so it's 0-0. I think Grice was the more spectacular of the two, certainly with the saves that he made, but both goalies solid, and that's certainly the reason why we're going into this first period, the first intermission tied at zero. Teams, but no goals resulted during the first 20 minutes of play at Pepsi Center. This game between the Avalanche and the Coyotes. Peter, let's talk about the chances for both teams, yep. but especially the Avalanche. They certainly had some opportunities. They moved the puck well. This is the situation right now for the Avalanche. The puck's just not going in the net. I mean, they, they're getting a little frustrated, but you can't. You can't allow frustration to enter into it. Because when you look at these chances, this is what you're trying to do. You're driving at the net. There's Mitchell. Nice pass down low by O'Reilly to McKinnon. McKinnon, a beautiful pass to Landis Gunn. So the puck is on the right guy's sticks inside of these situations. And again, Talbot, absolutely outstanding at the other end. And I've asked Semyon Varlamov this question, Michael. I said, when you look down at the other end, and you see a goaltender playing as well as Grice is playing in tonight's game. He said, do you, do you recognize that and say that you have to have your A game? He said, absolutely. You'll look down some nights and you just know the guy at the other end is on his game. And so you have to stay sharp as, you know, like any game you stay sharp, but sometimes you know really what's happening for your team. Avalanche Coyote set to go into the second period of play. McKinnon, Landeskog, O'Reilly. Along with defenseman Eric Johnson and Nate Gennon to start things for Colorado. Here we go. Avs Coyotes. This is the second of three games this year these two teams will play against each other. Avs won in Phoenix on November 21st, the 4 3 overtime game which Ryan O'Reilly got the overtime winner next time they'll play shortly after the Olympic break February 28th here in Denver the game number three to finish out the season series Botker out of the corner with the puck dashing in front and off comes the Yandel he shoots tough angle but Barlamov was up against the post Vermette for the Coyotes knocked down by Landeskog Play back to the point. Yandel wise, and his pass goes wide of the net. Good pass to center for McKinnon. Cuts to the boards. His pass slowed up by Bodger, taken by Yandel. Lifts the puck to center. And we do have a stop in the action. And on the ice, no score. Stop by Cooney Lexus during the December to remember sales event for exceptional offers on new Lexus all-wheel drive sedans and SUVs. Luxury has an address, Cooney Lexus, the Greenwood Village and Colorado Springs. And for the Avalanche, they're very much aware. This is a Phoenix club that's, you know, had pretty good control of this series since March 2010. 10-1-3 versus the Avalanche. Coyotes with a puck in the Avs zone. To the point. Shot and hit the chest of Varlamov. 
The puck is punched up the slot, but held in by Verbata for Phoenix. Turns it around the boards. Shot by Kennedy gets blocked. And a race for the puck and a breakaway chance for the defenseman. Shot saved by Grimes. Andre Ben winds up with a breakaway opportunity. But Grice denied him. Nice read by Benoit on that play. He saw the puck, went to the Avalanche player, and he just kept going. It sort of stopped a little. It may have bounced off the skate of the defenseman, but suddenly he had the breakaway. Pass for Duchesne. Oh. Back behind for Barry. In the slot, Holden rips the shot wide. And the puck turned around the boards. Barry, six foot behind the Phoenix net for Duchesne. Gets tangled up with Yandel. Then Murphy on Duchesne. The puck pushed up the boards. Knocked back behind the net. Murphy after it. Yandel to the red line. His pass. Goes off of Rob Klinkhammer. Pass out in front block. Klinkhammer. His nickname's got to be Colonel, right? None of these kids are old enough to know that. Come on. <laughs> Everybody knows Logan Zero. His granddad may have been called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it. You got it. Perfect. <laughs> Eric Johnson smacks at the puck to Mitchell. Oh, it rolled away from him. He dove, but could not reel it in. Good hit by Gennett. Stasty has the puck for the Avalanche. That's right up the middle, right on the tape of Stastny. Gives to Mitchell, cutting in, he shoots, and Grice hugs the puck against his chest for the save. Well, here's the first chance for the Avalanche earlier. Benoit, the puck comes up. Parental throws it up, and it's sort of like it bounces off to something, and all of a sudden, Benoit, good, my good, aggressive play. A lot of times, defensemen will stop right there and get back into the zone, but he saw that puck coming up, and Grice, another big save. And Eric Johnson, Mike, I'll tell you, I've had more people talking about the improved play of Eric Johnson, just in all three zones, but most especially in that offensive, or the defensive zone. Well, we get our first penalty of the game. And it's going against Phoenix. Into the box goes Michael Stone, interference, the call. And so the Avalanche, boy, they want to get their power play yeah. going. They really, this will, Mike, it's important. I mean, in, in all parts of the season, but inside of right now, the Avalanche are playing a lot of games. As we look at the penalty, just interference on. Wardlow kept the feet moving. The Avalanche went on that road trip, Mike, and they were over the road trip on the power play. And there were times inside the games when they could have taken control with a power play goal. And this might be the team to do it against, ranked 27 in the league on the penalty kill. Phoenix, the Avalanche, get a power play. Stone for interference at 319. Loose puck in front, cleared out by the Coyotes. The F score on the power play, lucky winner. We'll get tickets to an upcoming game. For a chance to win, you can register at afwonline.com slash altitude. Murphy turns the puck off the boards and got it out. To the red line, Landeskog lifts the puck to the corner. Bounce free. Mitchell swats it to the corner for Duchesne. To the point, Parento slides it across. Turn back for Parento. Into the circle, Landeskog. Mitchell's parked in front of the net. Landeskog pass over towards Duchesne in the slot. Shot, big save by Grice. Boy, he cut across in a hurry. Oh, that chance by Barrett. He really is moving laterally. Excellent tonight. Especially left to right, because the Avalanche have had some great opportunities but nice read by Barry to be in that open spot for that quick pass. Johnson carries the center. Pass. Taken by McKinnon. Back around the boards to the near side. Johnson shoots across the ring. Johnson with the puck. Benoit shot safe. Rebound. Bounced. And it goes wide. McKinnon 
Peter, it's a moment ago. You can add to the repertoire of McKinnon. You see the way he took that pass? Michael, this, this just dropped the, off the skate from behind. Penalty is over. Two shots on net for the Avs during that power play chance. But not able to score. The Avalanche are offside. No, some of the hard work by the Avalanche down low, trying to get something going, bodies down low, driving people to the front of the net. You see the Johnson right here, but look at McKinnon, reach behind him, Mike. That, that puck, was the, the skate behind him. skate behind. Is he skating forward? The, the puck is coming behind him. He takes his left skate and kicks it forward to his stick. Didn't break stripe. Didn't break. <laughs> that was really impressive. Your natural tendency is not if you slow down a little bit and use that skate, which is closer to the puck, to try to control. Yeah, my usual tendency for me in that play was to fall. I step, step on, on, the on puck, it, step <laughs> on it, and end up in the, you know, <laughs> in the hospital. Yeah, eight stitches to the head as I fell on the boards. Yandel handles the puck. Pass to center ice. Ribeiro. Fake like he was going to send the puck back to the defensive zone and then turn, but. What he received for that was a big time hit by Bortolo, and Mike Ribeiro is hurt. And the, the bench uh, for uh, the Coyotes are screaming at Bortolo. That's a key figure for the Phoenix Coyotes, Mike Ribeiro. There's no penalty on the play. Yeah, I mean. That's what Mike the kind of play. He just got squished. Ribeiro is just not a big guy. All right, back with more details about uh, Mike Ribeiro when we come back. Well, Mike, no score yet in this game, but Mike Ribeiro, who is a big part of this club offensively, Mike, but he is just not a big guy. He is, he's, uh, he's, I mean, he must be outweighed by 50, 60 pounds in this situation. With Bordalo and Bordalo just comes across, Mike, and just elbows down. He just again, sometimes you just get squished. And when a man happens to be that much bigger, and, and Bordalo, like we've seen, he hits hard and he hits right through you. So there's no brushing when Bar uh, when Patrick Bordalo hits you. Romero to the Phoenix locker room, and we're set for a face-off at mid ice. Center ice by Murphy of Phoenix. Stassi chips the puck to the corner. Hansel on it. Back to the point for the Coyotes. Down the boards for Hansel. Flies it over to Verbata. Tipped in the corner from Kennedy. Over skates the puck. Manages to work it back for Hansel. He gives to Verbata. Coyotes hold the puck in the AM zone. They continue to cycle it. Hansel, his shot gets blocked, reaches for it, he's got it, goes across ice. Yandel fires a pass, Murphy shoots and misses. Back up the boards for Handel. Put it behind the net for Tim Kennedy. Wraparound try, that's denied by Varlamov, and Mitchell races to center ice for the Avalanche. Flips the puck in and then goes after it. Her bottom blocks it. Jersey shoots the puck off the boards. Cut off the red line. And then drilled back into the Phoenix zone. Mike, you, you can see what a, what a tough matchup it is to get Hansel. To handle 6'6", 235, 240, and, and he controls the puck so well. He puts it way out there. Just hard. He, it's impossible to poke check. Yeah. Pass to the blue line. Talbot moving in. Keeps wide. Centers out in front and just topped over the stick of Duche. Bodker bumps the puck in. It's going to be a penalty on Holden for taking down Bodker. And the Coyotes will get a power play opportunity. But Nick Holden going to the box, and the Coyotes get their first power play chance of the game. This is a tough play for a defenseman. Bodker can absolutely fly, maybe as fast as any oh, player. Paper. And you're trying to just stay in front of him, not do what Holden does here gets you know he gets everything sort of tied around him and Rogers goes down and now Phoenix gets their first power play and one of the real keys for their power play Mike is the point man. we talked about the defenseman how 
well they've done this year and throughout their careers as far as putting up numbers, and they do it very well on the power play. Seventh best power play in the league. It's O'Reilly with the puck. The drive to the front of the net. Ekman Larson does his best. Hold him off, but O'Reilly did get a shot that Greg's got to make a glove save on. Handle wheels out to center. Pass to the line, Rivero. He's back. Rivero's back, fortunately, for Phoenix. Not in the locker room too long. Pass across for Rivero. Back behind in the slot, here comes Yandel, cutting in, pass, shot, score! That was a nice looking passing play by the Coyotes to set up the goal by Antoine Vermette. His eighth of the season, second on the power play, and the Coyotes get the first goal of the game on the power play. Well, we, we talked, Mike, about how well this Finnish Coyote, you know, defenseman can move the puck with Ekman Larson and Yandel, and there's a perfect example. He's not open, and then all of a sudden, right here, watch the move. Boom, he comes across, and everybody's pulled towards him. Everybody's watching him, and they slips that pass to Vermet, Vermet, who is another one of those guys, Mike, that doesn't get a lot of recognition around the league, but he is just a really solid center iceman for the Phoenix Coyotes. And, Mike, there it is, that... That all-important first goal. It has been a huge factor in games the Avalanche have played this year. Well, the Coyotes this year, they're 12-2-1 when they score first. They have 17-0. It just has become a leg, Peter, that it's very difficult to come back. Especially if you can get up by more than one goal. I was going to say, now the pressure's on because trying to come back from two is so, is so tough. Especially the way we're seeing this game being played here tonight. This, this, this has been tough. Goaltenders are playing well. Yep. And just tight. Tight checking. And Andy had to throw the fact that right now for the Avalanche, Puck's just not finding his way in. I mean, there's... Grice has, has made four just absolutely spectacular saves. Out for the bucket center. Parento cutting in. He shoots. That rising shot. Comes around the glass. Coyotes move to center. Pumped in by Moss. And Barry for the Avalanche. Moving behind the net. Broken up at center ice. David Moss cutting across. He shoots. And uh, whistle that one wide. Romero tapped it to the corner. Rolled behind the net for Moss. Holden staying with him. Moss protects the puck, set it behind the net. Rivera wide open behind the net. Nobody on him. Centers. Moss in front, shot wide of the net. To the point, Yandel with a chance, had a block. Blink camera. Sends it behind the net for Rivera. Looking for something to happen. Rivera moving behind the net, and he tried to lift it over the net. He didn't quite get it high enough. Is that what, he, that's what it looked like to me? He was trying to lift it over Barry and to himself in front. Shot. That is stopped by Varlamov, and came free, and then batted wide. Back to the corner. Centering try. Punch free. Blocked by Yandel at the blue line. And carried out to center by Bravada. Taken from him, and in by Duchesne. Outlet pass. Pass to center ice. Over the line, Kennedy. Nice pass in the middle for Hansel. Going to slip around again, and Handel stays up on his skate. Protects that puck, gives to Bravada, he shoots wide. Murphy from the right point for the Coyotes to Bravada. That power play goal by the Coyotes seemingly has given them a lift. Kennedy, it's been back and forth all game long until this last three minutes. Ekman Larson, the defenseman, centers, Hansel, shot, save. And the puck is kicked up the slot, but the Coyotes are on it. Ekman Larson's pass tipped to center ice. Pollock gets it back into his own zone. Pass off the board. Pumped ahead by Hansel. We have 8.20 left to go in the period. one nothing for the Coyotes. They've got a power play goal. Four to one. 
is entered in front. That bank back behind the net. Alfred turns it off the glass. Didn't get it out of the zone. Side of the net. Beckman Larson back ends it around. Scooped up, carried to center. Swartz pass for Bissonette. Dropped it for Halpert. Over the line, Bissonette cutting in. Pass on goal. Big save. Rebound. Score. On the rebound. Scored by Jordan Swartz's second goal of the season. And it's 2 nothing for Phoenix. You just kind of felt something happen in there for the Coyotes after they scored that first goal. Yeah, and, and on this particular play, Mike, it's on the rush. Phoenix Coyotes score on the rush. The Edmonton Oilers did a nice job on the rush against the Avalanche. And just get you were beaten to spots on the ice on that particular rush for the Phoenix Coyotes. And as, as we talked about, a big goal for Phoenix as the Avalanche were trying to just sort of fend off Phoenix's pressure. And then the fourth line comes up with a big goal for the Phoenix Coyotes. Oh, the goal scored by Phoenix Schwartz. Scored by number 14. Jeff Halpern, Paul Bissonnette with the assist at 12.06. 2 nothing for Phoenix. Schwartz from Halpern and Bissonnette at 12.06. Scramble for the puck along the near side boards. Holden after it for the avalanche. Moves it off the glass and uh, sails down the ice. Whistle's been blown, and the abs are called for icing. All right, let's see who is in the groove. Brought to you by Groove Subaru. Uh, you look at this Phoenix club, and you see why they are so dominant as far as controlling the face-offs. For Matt, number two, as far as a career, Manny Maholz are now with Carolina, number one. And you pick up Helper, who's on that fourth line. So you can make at, at the end of periods, end of games, there's a lot of options that they can throw out there as far as face-offs and getting that big draw. Yeah, Vermette playing in the 700th NHL game tonight. And face-off percentage this season, 58.4% coming into the game. Shot high by Flinkham. Magic number for really being good, Mike, is 55. You, you get over 55%, you start, that's, you're starting to be dominant. And it doesn't seem like a number that's dominant. Yeah. You just, it's, you're like, you know, you're just winning just over half. But you're winning 10 more than you're losing after 100 face-offs. And it's, that's enough. But believe me, because these guys work so hard on face-offs. 55%, you're, you're out there a lot for your coach. And how many face-offs, Peter, do you know during the course of an average hockey season would a, would a centerman take? Oh, that all depends on the on certainly on the guy how, how, how many solid face-off guys they have. What a top guy. Oh, oh my right. goodness. You know, you, you think five, six hundred anyway, and you've got looking at ten extra one, ten yeah. extra wins for every hundred. That really does add up, doesn't it? Well, in, in the course of any one game, there's a there's about 60, 65 face-offs inside of a game. Matt Duchesne with the puck for the avalanche. Over six minutes oh. to go in the period. Pollock winds the puck around. First back by Duchesne for McGinn. The parent toe centered in front. Pop free. Sarge slugs it back behind the net. Chopped that by a couple players behind. Parent toe and McGinn. Ekman Larson and he squeezed the puck free. Verbata turns it off the glass. Got it out. Not deep enough for an icing draw. How about this one? I just handed a note. Spetsa took 1,700 face off. Oh, goal by the Ads! What a play! And the Ads will take that one. And Patrick Bordalo threw it off the leg. Spear to the goaltender. Grice and the Avalanche get the goal. And it made it a 2 to 1 game on Bordalo's fourth goal of the season. And a big one, a big goal for the Avalanche. Cody McLeod forces the play right there. Now, I'm not sure who is going to get the goal. It's a puck. Oh, I think it went off yeah, of Bordelow's so, leg. Yeah, it went off Bordelow's leg. But McLeod right in on top right here. That's when things started to go bad for Phoenix. So good pressure by the two energy guys for the Avalanche and Bordelow. 
big, big goal for Colorado. They're going to check to see if they need a review. That actually hasn't happened yet. The referee waiting to see if he's going to be handed a phone or not. We'll see. The only, yeah. The goal counts. No need to, for a long review. Out on the ice. And so that one stands. And Patrick Bortolo with his fourth goal of the season. The assist is going to go to Cody McLeod and Corey Sarch. It's a two-to-one hockey game. Coyotes to the point. Shot. Blocked. From McLeod. McLeod throws it off the board. Kept in by the Coyotes. Marvelous. Halpert slugs the puck to the corner. Swartz scored the second goal for this Coyotes team. Around the boards, Halpert pinned up against the boards. Bordolo going to move the puck to center. He does so. Slemko lobs the puck back in. Coyotes in the slot. Big shot. Save. Rebound score. And it is 3 to 1 for the Coyotes. Another rebound type of goal for the Phoenix Coyotes. And right after the abs, got themselves right back in. Give the uh, Coyotes credit. They respond, and it's 3-1 for Phoenix. Well, they got beat to the puck. They got beat down low to the puck. And, Mike, again, look where Ekman, Larkman, Ekman Larson is on the play. I mean, he is walking into this shot, Michael. He's at the top of the circles. The goaltender cannot control rebounds from that point because Ekman Larson fires peace. And right to Vermat, who gets his second goal of the game. Phoenix goal scored by number 53. 1. One for men, assisted by Faber number 3, Oliver McMahon, Larson, and number 8. Matthew Center Ice broke it up. Goal comes at 15.33 for men from Ekman Larson and Botker. Ekman Larson and Botker at 15. Coyotes back by 2. Behind the net. Mike Rivera with the puck to center. Slides it through the circle. Slammed in by McCulloch. And that puck kicks up in the air into the faceoff circle. Pass back to the point. Picked off. Avalanche have got it. Calvin coming in. It's held up. The puck pushed along the board. Stastny took it away. Centered for Mitchell. He was held up. Starts in. His shot goes wide to the net. Back around to the far point. Johnson harassed. And the puck bumped down the center. Go off the boards. The Avs were making a line change. That gives the Coyotes a chance to take control. Yandel's pass. Picked off the skate. Stays inside the zone. And slugged wide of the net. Urbana's got it. Well, every bounce right now going the Coyotes' way. Slammed out by the Avalanche. This will be a nice one. There's the whistle. Avs called for ice. The Avalanche win tonight. The CSU Global application fee will be waived on Wednesday. CSU Global is the 100% online university where you can earn your bachelor's or master's degree. You can apply now at csuglobal.edu. Two coaches looking at this game in a very different way. It's for Phoenix right now. Shot. That banked off a uh, body comes one. They're, next, they're, one, they're one play away from taking over complete control of this game. The Avalanche, they're looking for somebody besides Bordelow, their fourth line guys, to come up with a big play. Icing has called on the Avalanche. It's a nice look here. Abs three points ahead of the Coyotes. 40 for the Avs, 37 for Phoenix. Six, three, seven, nine, six. But inside of every season, every group of games, like there's times inside of a game where you've got to find it. You, you just have to, it may not be your night, but you have to make it your night. You have to go out and find a way to get something done offensively. Peter, after this game against Phoenix, the next five in a row for the Avalanche are in division games. 
And it's a new playoff format this year. Backhander by Botcher kicked away. You finish in the top three in your division, you are in the playoffs. Avalanche sitting right now fourth in their division, Central Division. Well, there will be two teams that are wild cards that make it. Pass across for Vermet. Slaps it into the Avalanche zone. 20 shots for the Coyotes, 18 for the Avalanche. A 3-1 advantage for Phoenix. With two minutes to go in the second period. Bounced out in front by McKinnon, and Grice was alert and made the save. Antoine Vermet having an outstanding game. He gets the rebound goal to make it 3-1 Coyote. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate it, Kyle. Well, when you look at the standings, Peter, what do you see first? Well, you see the Avalanche sitting now outside of those top three you talked about, Michael, in division. So they become a wild card club. Vancouver with a couple of wins in a row for the last couple of days, move ahead of the Avalanche. So right now, that makes you the hunted. The Avalanche become that club inside the, the division and the conference that so you're trying to hunt down for that next spot. Slapped around again for the Avalanche. Back behind the net for Duchesne, trying to force his way free. Does and backhands it through the crease. Johnson pins it in. He shoots, deflected by McGinn wide. And lifted to center ice by Hansel. Does it have enough momentum for icing? Nope, it's been way off. Johnson pushed the puck behind the Colorado net. Return to Eric Johnson. Pass up ice for Parento. Gives to Duchesne, but Colorado is offside. Well, why don't we see what's on tap for the Avalanche? It's always brought to you by Coors Light. Thursday night, Avalanche up in the province of Manitoba when they play the Winnipeg Jets. They started coverage at 5.30 here on Altitude Sports. That is a division game for the Avalanche. It starts a streak of five division games in a row for Colorado. This will be the second look of the season for Dads and Jets against each other. First time in one of Who's puck in front of the net? Bump free. We're in the final minute of the second period. Backhanded across. Barry with the puck. Slow down by Price. The puck dribbles into the corner. Sent up the board. Point camera. Clears. No icing, and then it eventually ends up going right to Varlamov. Pass to center. Good find Landon Scott. Thrice out of the net to play the puck. Hand off goes to Keith Yandel. We had a pretty assist on the first goal of the game. This time we will have an icing call with 20 seconds to go in the period. Face off coming back in the Phoenix zone. And it was interesting to watch how Dave Tippett's club took that first goal and just kind of kept going and building momentum in this game. No question, the first few shifts after that goal, they were just coming. And eventually they get that second one. The Avalanche got themselves back, but you got to give Phoenix credit. They got that two-goal lead back on a great play by Vermette. That puck came off hard for that rebound. See if the Avs can do something here in the final 20 seconds with a faceoff in the Coyote zone. Scramble for the puck behind the net, work free. Race to the near boards. Talbot colliding along the boards with Chichur. Chichur reaches in for the puck. Back to the point. Johnson shoots as the horn sounds to signal the end of the period. All four goals in this game came in the second period. Coyotes open up the scoring with a power play goal. They made it 2 nothing. Half's got back in it, but then Vermette with a second of the game has put the Coyotes up 3-1. to one. And, you, you know, you're looking at the specialty teams again for the Avalanche. They had a power play opportunity, couldn't score. Phoenix got their first one, and they scored their first goal on their power play. Part of the difference, certainly, in this game, with Phoenix leading the Avalanche 3-1 to one after 40 minutes in Denver. After the break, don't go anywhere. It's the Subaru Intermission Report. The goals in the second period, Phoenix scored three of the four. And they lead uh, by a couple going to the third period of play. But all began for Phoenix, Peter, on the power play. Their first power play opportunity of the game. 
And Phoenix took advantage of it with a nice looking uh, passing play. Yeah, but for the Avalanche, unfortunately, after the Avalanche hadn't converted on their first power play opportunity, Phoenix takes the momentum in this game. Yendel, just a great pass. Vermette finishes it off. The boy was a, just a, a wonderful play. Yendel walks through the slot. Everybody's watching him, slips it over. Vermette makes no mistake. And then it's just a nice rush on the rush, fourth line four. Phoenix gives a 2 0 lead after a bunch of good shifts for Phoenix and then Bordelow and the Avalanche's fourth line with McLeod and Cleach come up with a big goal, but then Mike, Ekman Larson coming in from the point, just fires a bomb and it's right to Vermette, who didn't waste, Mike, he didn't waste any time making it 3-1. Now the Avalanche, you look at it, Mike, and you go back to that first period, you had McKinnon, you had Landeskog, you had Talbot, who couldn't get that first goal of the game, and now you're down heading into the third period. And Mike, we've talked about it so many times. Someone's got to step up. Let's see who it is for the Avalanche. We did the start of the broadcast. We talked about the Avalanche, their best players, have to have a big game tonight. Somebody of that group, maybe it's Duchesne, makes a pass across, got it broken up. One of those guys step up and have a big third period and ignite the Avalanche offense. in the corner, Abs McGinn skating to center. Goes through a few bodies, make the pass across Taranto. Going to be a penalty on Phoenix. So the Avalanche will get an early power play here in the third period. Early power play chance for the Avalanche. Number 50, Phoenix, minor penalty, hooking. Well, this is exactly Outside of a goal, is exactly what the Avalanche would have wanted early. Jamie McGinn, who had the Avalanche's lone goal last game against the Vancouver Canucks, draws a penalty, and now it's time for the Avalanche to get their power play working. Penalty, number 50, the hooking penalty on Antoine Vermette, 39, 39 seconds. 39 seconds into the period. The power play chance for the Avalanche. Johnson, Benoit, Stastny, O'Reilly. And McKinnon, five out for the Avalanche. McKinnon's behind the net. Work free. Johnson come deep into the zone. Roll the puck around the boards. Held in by Benoit. Inches away along the blue line. Gives the puck to Stastny. Back to Benoit. Slides it across for Johnson. Tipped by O'Reilly, but wide of the net. Stastny, O'Reilly shot. Saved by Grice. Somehow we saw that because there was a screen right in front of him. Boy, that is a big save. The Avalanche actually set up a real nice play. O'Reilly to tip it. Here's, here's O'Reilly right here. Johnson throws it across, and that didn't miss by much, Mike, as it comes across. Nice read. That's the old Sadin trip, uh, pass. But here's the save right here. McKinnon did that perfectly. He timed it perfectly. The goalie couldn't see it. It was right there for any rebound. Mitchell. Tossed out, Duchesne will take the face off. Got it across to the boards for Landeskog. Coming in from the point, Tyson Berry. Works the puck free, but it's Eklund Larson. Turns and sends it around the shelf and out. Barlamov set behind the net. Halfway through the Vermette penalty. Parento working his way through the neutral zone. Backhand flip to the corner. Shane or riding Ekman Larson behind the net. And there's a pile. Both teams try to get possession on this Avalanche power play. And Ekman Larson turns and with ease able to deliver that puck all the way down the ice. And start another breakout. 30 seconds left in the power play. Parento carrying the puck. Brought in offside by the Avalanche. A good defensive work right there by the Phoenix Coyotes. The first thing you always want to do, Mike, is get in the zone. Enter the zone. Find a way to get into the zone with under control. And Dave Tippett's club did a terrific job right there of sort of negating that. And now the Avalanche has to get a draw and try to get the puck into the zone. Alfred against Mitchell for the faceoff. It's 
squirts across the neutral zone. Eric Johnson will back pedal into his own zone. Drops it for Holden. He finds Mitchell. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Shot by Klemko out of the zone. One last run as Vermette comes out of the box. Kainos have the puck. Will they kill the penalty? And it remains 3-1 in favor of the Phoenix Coyotes. Sam's had one shot during that two-minute power play. Cross ice for Stastny. Pass call for being offside. As we talked about for Patrick Waugh's club, Mike, it is, you know, that, that, that frustration of not scoring, especially here at home, where the Avalanche have done a good job all season long of putting up, you know, three, four goals inside of games. And, you know, you squeeze those sticks, you push a little harder, you just need, you need one. You thought you had it when Bordelow scored, but then credit Phoenix, they came back and made it a two-goal game. Now you need another one to get them going. Cloud smacks the puck to the Phoenix line. Coyotes take possession back. Went wide pass for Verbata. He sends the puck wide of the Colorado net. Handle. They prevented by Gannon from getting to the puck. That was good hard work by Gannon. There were a couple of Coyote players right on him. Delivered back into the Colorado zone. And one of them handled. So, I mean, that was a good physical shift for Gannon. Bounced off of McHollick. He'll give the puck to X and Larson. Pass to center right. The red line shot in around the hole. Johnson trying to move the puck up the far side wall. Clink hammer. Able to wedge the puck free. Makes the pass behind the net. To the point. McHollick winds and shoots. That one's skinned wide. X and Larson. Lines with Landeskog. They see each other on the Olympic team. Work free behind the net. Given to Rivera. The point came out of the zone, so delay offside on the Coyotes. Benoit's head man pass for Landeskog. He skates through the middle zone. Hope check. Coyotes lock things up in the neutral zone. Foster cuts in. He gets poke check. The Avalanche take away the puck. That the last shift. The Avalanche tried to enter the zone with five Phoenix Coyotes in the zone. Pass bouncing in the faceoff. Connor Murphy. Foster brings it across the rink for Keith Yen. His pass skipped away from Vodka results in the Phoenix Coyotes being called for icing. Let's go back ringside, check in with Julie Brown. Hey guys, tonight at the Pepsi Center, it's Littleton Hockey Night in attendance. Our players and families from the last 50 years in the Littleton Hockey Association, otherwise known as the Littleton Hawks. Earlier this year, they launched their Hall of Fame. Now, the Hall of Fame includes current and former NHL players such as, such as Nashville's Seth Jones, Carolina's Drayson Bowman, and former DU Pioneers Nick and Drew Shore. So congratulations to the Littleton Hawks. Lots of history here in Colorado and sending a lot of kids on to bigger and better things. Guys. We also saw, Julie, that, that Chris Bork, Ray Bork's yep. son, played uh, for a short time while his well, father was a member of the Avalanche. And the Littleton Hawks have always been one of your favorite clubs. <laughs> They're the Detroit Red Wings of the youth hockey. Uh, they, they've had a wonderful oh, program yeah. for all the years, and boy, what a what a just a terrific job they've done. All I mean is that's the rival. Oh, to, to the rival for everybody. Everybody <laughs> wants to be little. <laughs> uh, they had such a great program. And then you, you think about even other Avalanche players have had their kids playing through there too. Sackage, Adam Hook and so on. Shot by Duchesne. It's uh, cleared away. Bump back behind that. Mitchell with the puck. Pass back to the point for Benoit. Got around. Johnson gives him again. Hands it. One hand to the head. Held it. The Near side boards by Eric Johnson. Touching the middle, his shot slowed up. And the 
Coyotes ran him for a bottom. Skates out in the center, makes the pass that gets through. Linkhammer, which to off the puck. Clearing attempt, blocked by Bravada. Johnson gives the puck to Stasby. Cross ice pass for Stasby. Skates into the zone. Talbot is shot, caught by Grice. No rebound. And we'll be back. More third period to play from Pepsi Center in Denver with the Coyotes lead the Avs by two. Earlier we asked you on our did you know question uh, brought to you by Stevenson Automotive which cup winning coach did Dave Tippett play with as a teammate in Hartford for the Whalers the answer Joel Quenville congratulations Kelly you knew the correct answer and, and they have been about as good of friends as there is in the coaching fraternity Babcock Quinville trots then he rough now of course with Dallas but like that they remain just great, buddy. Edgar Larson sends the puck around the boards. Scooped out in the center. Pass ahead. Lifted in. Edgar Larson wheels back behind the net. He's down the ice. Well, Lomoff will handle the puck for the Avalanche with 13 minutes to go in the third period. The Avalanche looking for a spark. Here's the third period. Stasty. Shoots it around the glass. Barrel a vice. Tipped out the center. Slapped back in by the Avs. And Ekman Larson with some time. Both teams making some changes. Jimmy, right here. Pass comes across. Murphy. Lifted in. And Landscott chased the puck down for the Avalanche. Harassed in the corner by Kennedy. In his direction, moves the puck across for Johnson. But you can see what Phoenix are doing right now. They have not had a shot on net in this third period. They started the period at 20 shots on net. They have 20 shots on net. They're just playing neutral zone hockey. Don't allow the Avalanche in the zone unless you got a whole bunch of people back. And trying to move the puck around in the Phoenix zone, get a scoring chance. O'Reilly wrapping the puck across, it back behind the net. O'Reilly on it, sends it to the near side corner. Murphy shoots it around the boards. Murphy took a hit from McKinnon as he sent that puck out. Hansel for Phoenix. Moves it off the boards. Scooped into the slot, Stone shoots and misses. And that bouncing puck for Al, the red, the blue line by Vermette. Whipped around. Jim Shura had the puck for a moment. Clearing attempt by the Avs, kept in play by Stone. To Jim Shura, Phoenix. To the corner, Landscott. Start to move out to the center, but poke check. Jim Shura in the slot for Vermette. Slapped at it. Coyotes get back on side. Cross ice, Potker steals. Oh boy. And that results in a penalty. So the errant pass then turns into a penalty call against the Avalanche. And Phoenix will get another power play chance. Caller number nine, two minutes for well, this is just a case for the Avalanche, and Mike, you're not making excuses. You're just, it's just what it is. The Avalanche trying to force the play out of their own zone because they can't get into the Avalanche, into the Coyote zone. It was just, I mean, that, that was a situation that last couple of shifts, Mike, where Phoenix was just standing up at the Avalanche blue line, stopping the puck and dumping it back in deep. Peter, for the Avalanche, they had gone almost two games without a uh, home penalty called against them until the holding got called for a penalty in the second period. So not a lot of penalties called against the Avs. It's just the second oh, one penalty. here tonight. It's Matt Duchesne for a hooking at 9.08. Of the third period. Yeah, the game you're talking about is Minnesota game is the one that connects with this one. There was no penalties called for either club. Exactly. Yeah, skates over the line, gives the puck to Hansel in the slots. 
Over skated by Ribeiro. That gives the a chance shorthanded. Leafs trying to cut in, but Ekman Larson took it back. He finds Hansel. Cross ice for Ribeiro. Kicks on the power play. Pass to the point. Tip wide of the net. Coyotes playing tonight without Shane Doan. Leads their team in goals, and Derek Morris does a lot of quarterbacking on the power play. Bouncing puck shot, and somehow Barlamov makes a brilliant save. And in fact, he got a tap on the pads from Keith Yandel in appreciation of what a terrific save that was. Well, they've, they've done a nice job getting open on the power play. Yandel is such a force. He is so difficult to handle. You see, be a big number 11 down low. You can try to come across on him, Mike, and he is just such a large man that you, it takes almost two guys, and then Yandel does a nice job of coming down from the point. Scramble for the puck after the faceoff. Coyotes have it. Ekman Larson, the blue line. Off the boards for Kel Botker. Steal by Mitchell, the avalanche. Lift the puck and it takes a bounce. Edmund Larson fields it. Gates through center into the Colorado zone. Check from behind by O'Reilly. O'Reilly whipped it off the glass. Gets the puck out of the zone. But the Avalanche kill off this penalty to Duchesne. They'll have about nine minutes remaining, and we have seen Patrick Watt pull his goaltender awfully early at times, but we're also going to see the defenseman jumping up into the play. 15 seconds left in this power play. Yandel winds and shoots. Locked in front of the net. Moss dropped the puck behind. Colorado net. Barry off the boards. And is cleared out. That allowed Duchesne to come out of the penalty box. Phoenix one for two in this game of the power play. They managed only one shot on net. That chance by Hansel, tipped by Benoit. Into the netting above the glass and out of play. Phoenix continues to lead in the third period by a score of three to one. It's going to be tough for you to find time to buy my Christmas present, but here, here's the schedule for the Avalanche. Winnipeg, then a day off. Minnesota, day off. Sunday, and then they go Monday, Tuesday against Dallas in a back-to-back -back day off. Edmonton, Los Angeles, and San Jose to finish it off. So yeah, I guess maybe San Jose would be the best place for you to get busy and find that special gift I think we're right next to our Brooks brothers there <laughs> nice Christmas time. Uh, Cartier <laughs> perfect you're, you're uh, medium <laughs> medium husky <laughs> From the husky department <laughs> oh man all right here we go 842 left in the third coyotes Leading at three to one. Back to even strength. Coyotes had just one shot on their two-minute power play. Weren't able to increase their lead on the point. Shot by Gannon goes wide of the net. Punch three by Yandel. Bounced off the boards. And turned down the ice. It's a race to the corner. Hand is up. Whistle's been blown. And Phoenix has been called for icing. ColoradoKiaDealers.com, that's the place to go. Optimus, Sorrentos, all just great, great cars. And Kia, you're looking for that special car and brand new car or that Christmas present for Peter, go to ColoradoKiaDealers.com. And for the Avalanche Bank, you got a tired group of five and a fresh group of uh, Phoenix and a fresh group for the Avalanche. Not a big thing, but maybe enough to get things going here. Ben has the puck, slides it across for Barry. McKinnon looking for the puck. He's got some time to find it. Now has a full head of steam moving. Up ice. Over there, O'Reilly. Shoots. Blocked made by Grice. Been good tonight for the Coyotes, especially early on in the first period. Made some sensational save. To the point for Benoit, who was stopped on a breakaway by Grice. That one took a hop and comes wide of the net. Shane trying to make something happen. Pulled to the corner. O'Reilly 
His shot tipped by Duchesne sends the puck wide. Benoit pitches in from the point. Here's a good shift for the Avalanche. Maybe their best shift here in the third period. Duchesne is flattened behind the Phoenix net. O'Reilly with the puck for Colorado. Bouncing puck. Grabbed by McKinnon. He's in. He shoots, but it was tipped. And the puck ends up going out of play. A little bit of a surprise before tonight's nice game that Thomas Grice was in net. I guess just talking to the Phoenix people, Mike Smith not feeling 100%. But a lot of clubs right now. That's going around the blue bug. And Grice, Mike, he made a couple of right pad saves. Three of them over the course of the first period and a half of this game. They were absolutely outstanding. Then you throw in that breakaway yep. chance that Benoit had. Just over seven minutes to go here in the third. Face off control by the ass. McGinn, wraparound try. Bouncing puck, top of the crease. Coyotes, though, have the puck. Push the center, but the abs are right on it. Sarge, there's the pass for Johnson. Turn back behind the net for Corey Sarge. Mitchell shoots the puck in to the Phoenix zone. Slapped at by Talbot. To the corner for McGinn. Talbot lifts one into the face-off circle. Back to the point for Johnson. He shoots, and that one got through some traffic. And kicked out by Grice. Going across, Sarch. They have to really put the pressure on. Johnson spins. He shoots. Juggled, but caught by Grice. Well, the Ads are doing everything they can right now. A lot of pressure, but it's still 3-1 in favor of the Coyotes. In conjunction with the NHL, the Avalanche will be celebrating the history of hockey with some of the NHL's best-known trophies when the Avs host the Wild on Saturday. You can get your picture taken with the Stanley Cup. Doors will be open at 3 o'clock. Make sure you, you don't already have tickets. Get some for the game. That'll be what a treat. Look at that Stanley Cup. Great-looking trophies. What an opportunity for fans on Saturday. Well, for the Avalanche, time becomes a factor. The last few shifts, though, Peter, they've really been putting the pressure on. Barlama settles the puck behind the net. Right now, Phoenix is bending, but they have not broken. They've had only one shot during this uh, period so far, the Coyotes. That came on the power play. Meanwhile, for the Avalanche, Eight shots. The last few shifts have been really strong for the Avs. Behind the net, Stastny had a roll away. Slapped at by Kennedy, the Coyotes. Stastny keeps it in play for Colorado. Kennedy in the corner on top of the puck. Trying to push it up the boards. Parento slows him down. The puck comes free. Barry slides across. Benoit shot. Kicked out by Grice. Put behind the net. Parento tied up by Halpert. Parento peels away. Centering pass goes across for Landeskog. To Benoit. Into the corner. Parento. His pass got tipped. And Barlamov will settle things down. Long pass across. And Benoit shoots the puck around the boards in the Phoenix zone. Shot that by Ekman Larson. Slugged off the boards. Pollock's pass blocked by McKinnon, and Ekman Larson gets in the way. McKinnon tied up, and the Coyotes come to center ice. Verbata across the red line, dumps the puck to the corner. McKinnon ties up his man. And the puck spun around to the near side. O'Reilly trying to clear, hands have blocked it. O'Reilly got it back, and he gives the puck to Gennon. To Duchesne, handoff to McKinnon. He's into the Phoenix zone. He shoots, save, rebound. And turned out the center by Hanson. Not 
deep enough for an icing call. Eric Johnson's pass to the middle for McKinnon. Over the line for Talbot. He charges after the puck. Stone ridden off the puck by Talbot. And for Met. Led the Phoenix Coyotes with a couple of goals in this game. Out the path to center for Vermet. Shoots and the glove save made by Varlamo. Anton Vermet started his career of the Ottawa Senators, went to Columbus before joining Phoenix. And Mike, he is, this guy's made for big games. But he also, you know what else he's made for? Make the playoffs. He is a terrific playoff player. One, because you can trust him defensively. Two, he's terrific on face-offs, which is such a big key. And then he scores. I mean, it's a pretty good combination. He's durable, and he does so many things. And inside the playoff series, you need those guys that are key players in key situations. So the Coyotes, though, it's about getting into the playoffs right now. They are ninth in the conference. Mitchell for the Avalanche. Talbot back to Mitchell. Shoots the puck into the Phoenix zone. Rivera lost the puck. Centered side by Grimes. I can't believe it. What a night he is having. And then McGinn starts to get into it a little bit with David Moss. And then Rivero and Talbot slugging at each other. For Patrick Waugh, he's reunited this line that had played so well on the road. Talbot McGinn, Mitchell in the middle. And they have another solid shift for the Avalanche. That's some of the frustration, McGinn getting involved. When you watch that, you see the referees just going. Yeah. All right, you're punching each other, but I'm not going to call anything here. Not just calm let, down. It, let it go. Calm down, boys. Three minutes left in the third. Coyotes have the puck. Hands it. Tapped it into the app zone. Cross ice pass for Parento. Goes through the circle. Makes the pass in. It's out to center ice. Botker. Johnson coming back. Johnson with the angle on Botker. Takes him into the corner. Doesn't even allow a shot. Wedge back for Hansel. That long reach protecting the puck. Able to give the puck to Botker. Bank hands it around for Kennedy. Kicks the puck free. Comes down the middle. Pass across. Botker will chase the puck to the corner. Put it behind the net for Hansel. Wrap it around. Backhand drive. That's stopped by Varlamo. That was Botker with that opportunity. Not what the Avalanche wants right now. It's Phoenix spending this much time in their zone. Plug that by McCulloch into the corner. Back behind the net. 145 left to go. Patrick Waugh makes a uh, hold the goaltender here if the Avs can get out of their own zone. McKinnon behind the net. That gets blocked by Chip Chur. Sure, gets the pass back. Well, the Coyotes just eating up the clock right now, aren't they? Sure. Yeah, and, and just great cycle down low. Pass for Chichur, and just missed on. Yandel slams it on goal. Marlamov dropped it, trying to keep the play going. But Chichur's pass picked off by Duchesne. Skate to center. Marlamov on his way to the bench for an extra skater. Batted out to center ice. Varlamov on Wild the bench. Minutes remaining in the period. Pass through the middle block. Benoit for the Avalanche to O'Reilly. Sent in with 50 seconds to go in the period. Backhand around. That's blocked by Moss, but Benoit took it back for the Avalanche. Rolled it around. 35 seconds to go 
in the game. Kept in, Barry. Sends a pass across for O'Reilly. The puck behind the net for Talbot. Barry, shot tipped off the side of the net, banged at. Centered out in the slot. 20 seconds left, Barry's pass. And the puck comes around the boards to the near side away. It'll by O'Reilly. Shot by Benoit, goes high. Last 10 seconds of the game. Daniel sends it around the boards, had a block, and there is the horn to signal the end of the game. The Phoenix Coyotes win the game tonight, three to one. Vermette leads the way with two goals, but Thomas Grice was absolutely amazing in goal at times this evening. And, you know, you talk about a great performance, and then key saves inside of that great performance. We've talked about it a lot, the Avalanche, you know, getting that lead, how much a better hockey club they are when they get it. He didn't allow that in the first period. The Avalanche could have had the opportunity, Mike, to get that goal, and it just didn't happen early and give the Phoenix a great game. They win it 3-1. We'll come back, tell you about the three stars and uh, finish up our thoughts about tonight's game.